Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. If you find the analysis that I provide every Sunday uh, of use, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, the content. And so let's get into uh, some of the fundamental uh, developments uh, in the coming week, uh, as well as um, some in-depth uh, technicals and fundamentals uh, a little bit uh, later. So the key events in the developed markets, developed markets, you know, um, the G, G8, G9, G10 uh, currency uh, countries next week. So all eyes will be on the European Central Bank meeting next week. So they think, uh, this is ING, by the way, think.ing.com in case you want to have a, a read of it. Uh, we think a 75 basis points from the European Central Bank looks like a done deal. So probably been priced in at the moment, um, that 75 basis point. Uh, the PMI survey on Monday will also be closely watched, providing clues on whether the Eurozone economy has contracted even further. Now, um, you know, uh, uh, rate hikes are usually typically positive, but not positive in um, if the uh, economy is going into a potential uh, recession. Um, so let's see what happens there. Um, for the Bank of Canada, we expect a similar 75 basis point rate hike. Um, Bank of Canada will be hiking rates given the upside surprise in inflation. Uh, and in the article, they talk about the Fed uh, can't slow the pace of hikes just yet. And this is really because of uh, inflation, um, you know, still uh, rising or being sticky as the uh, is the is the term. Canada, a seventy five basis point hike is most likely outcome. UK markets looking for clarity on fiscal plans and government stability, and the eurozone, um, the ECB to hike by seventy five basis points again amid ongoing inflation concerns, and so. Um, there's some there's some analysis here, um, which I'll get into maybe a little bit of it. Um, but again, you can go to I'll, I'll post the uh, the actual the link in the description um, in the description um, on, on YouTube. So it says the Fed cannot slow the the pace of hikes yet. There are lots of important numbers for the U.S. next week, but none more likely to change the market's forecast of a 75 basis point hike on the second of November. Uh, Q3 GDP is likely to show positive growth after the technical recession experienced in the first half of the year. And those two consecutive quarters of negative growth were primarily caused by volatility in trade and inventories, which should both contribute positive, positively to the third quarter data. Consumer spending is under pressure, though, while residential investment will be a major drag on growth. We are forecasting a sub uh, consensus 1.7 annualized uh, rate of GDP growth. So um should be positive for the uh for the us uh canada uh more uh hikes likely to come so it talks about um a job creation has also returned and consumer activity is holding up so we agree that 75 basis point hike is the most likely outcome having previously forecasted a 50 basis point hike so um more hikes to come the uk um uh you know lots of um uh, I guess political uncertainty uh, around uh, the UK. This trust being the uh, shortest prime minister um, in um, UK history, uh, and I'll get into that a bit later, as well as uh, the eurozone as well, um, having um, their uh, seventy-five basis points, and um, pretty much again, the uh, it's 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 hard to see how the ECB cannot move. Again, by 75 basis points at the end of the, at the week's meeting, the, the 75 basis point hike looks like a done deal. All eyes will be on another more open issue, uh, excess liquidity, quantitative tightening and the terminal interest rate. And so, yep, there we are. Now let's get into uh, some of the charts, starting off on the dollar index. Dollar index um, is a measure of uh, the dollar strength against various currencies like the, um, the euro, the pound and the yen. And so, for me, my bias is still to the upside. Still, it's been like that pretty much for the whole year. Um, and you can see obviously zooming out what's happened year to date since this year, start of the year. And I've been saying, you know, long dollars, long dollars. Look at basically what's been happening. And so um, again, not financial advice though, um, just um, you know, giving you the observation. And uh, my bias still hasn't changed for now. Although there is, um, you know, on the horizon, there could be um, a change, but not, not not yet anyway and i think any pullbacks on the dollar are still buying opportunities whether it's going to be at the 10 10, 10 10s 109s or around the 108s 
So um, for me, um, again, it's just looking for uh, um, buying the dollar uh, for cheaper. And uh, one of the reasons why there could be a potential for the dollar to um, uh, to be a sell at some point would be the Fed officials are talking about a debate on rate peak and when to slow hikes. So hiking um, rate hikes and, and rate cycles, interest rate cycles, moving cycles. So you're gonna, um, you know, central banks don't hike forever, right? They hike, then they hold, then they cut, then they hold, then they hike, depending on what is going on with inflation and the economy. So Bullard sees minor moves once rates reach appropriate level, um, which is known as, I think, the terminal rate. And I think that's somewhere between 4.5 uh, and 4.75. And daily sees Fed shifting to smaller increases as peak rates near. So the central bankers, US central bankers, will uh, said the next phase in their campaign to curb inflation will be to debate how to raise interest rates uh, when to slow the pace of increases. So again, that's the cycle, right? They're going to have to slow the rate of increases, uh, rate hike increases at some point. So St. Louis Fed uh, President James Bullard and San Francisco Fed Chief Mary Daly both stressed the need to keep tightening policy with inflation at 40 year high while suggesting more caution next year. So for me, um, unless, you know, the, if the data does not support the narrative, then obviously the dollar might be a sell. But as long as the data supports the narrative of rate hikes, then for me, um, you know, the dog with the least fleas, the best of the worst is the uh, is the US dollar for now. So even though price might come down, um, you know, over the week or two, um, I just look at that as buying opportunities. So let's see what happens there. If you are looking to sell the dollar, then the, uh, you know, you've got supply zone there at the moment. If you see, you know, prices come up for, you know, to the 114s, then maybe you want to look, look to short there. For me, my bias is to the long side, so I tend to ignore trades that go um, in, in the opposite direction to what the way that I want to trade. There's no point because no technical analysis level was going to stand in the way of a uh, of strong fundamentals and risk sentiment. Uh, looking at the uh, dollar yen, and very interesting, the dollar yen or the yen. And uh, on Friday, late on Friday afternoon, we had um, uh, the the rumor that the uh, central bank, Bank of Japan, were intervened, right? And it's not really confirmed yet. And if you don't know what intervention is, central bank intervention is, um, uh, central bank intervention just basically is, and the key takeaways, let me zoom in, is a foreign exchange intervention refers to efforts by central banks to stabilize a currency, yeah? So destabilizing effects can come from both market or non-market forces. And so the market has been, um, you know, market or non-market forces have been really devaluing the uh, Japanese yen. This was the, I won't say line in the sand, but in September they intervened here and called like the 145 area was pretty much the area that they thought, you know, they didn't want uh, the yen to devalue by and the pace at which the, de the yen was devaluing. And so they intervened here. Now it didn't have much of an effect on the dollar because the dollar is quite strong and what you've seen is um you know market forces and non-market forces push prices higher or the entity value even more when they intervened here so then um you know the uh, central bank has really kind of intervened at the 150s 151s right into actually the 152s and so oh actually the rumor that they have matter of fact i can't confirm that they have because the room is the rumor and um, and so uh, you're seeing uh, this and, um, you know, in, in the group, in our private members uh, discord group, uh, we were talking about this. This was on the Friday morning. Um, I was saying, look at the acceleration of the UJ currently. The faster the devaluation, the more pressure for intervention. And um, and so, you know, posted a chart. And so, uh, yeah, um, there was a lot of pressure on the um, on the. Um, uh, Bank of Japan, right? And so, you know, we was watching this and uh, managed to get in, matter of fact, on this, on by the uh, uh, the yen, not against the dollar, actually against the pound. Uh, so, so bought a nice setup in anticipation of this uh, intervention on the pound uh, yen and up a few, quite a few hundred pips at the moment. So, um, yeah, you know, we saw, we saw this, uh, you know, play out. And um, you know, technical analysis traders. If you're if you're only trading technical analysis, you know you're never going to know these things are actually um, 
um, end plate, right? And um, and so you know, talking about um, you know technical analysis and really just being kind of a bit single-minded in 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 a term of in a sense that you know again there are um, things going on beyond the price chart that you must be aware of if you are you know interested in learning a bit more about that then we have um a uh, a webinar free webinar for you to join on the 4th of november at 7 p.m uh, london time and it's really how to trade fundamental strategies as well as uh, smart money um market maker concepts for the ultimate trading combination it will be presented by myself and mark chapman um Mark is a brilliant mind and uh, taught me a lot of things that I know. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think if you are struggling with uh, fundamental analysis or want to know more about fundamental analysis and really how to apply that to, and we talk about smart money concepts, I know that that, that um, term is being used all over, but, um, you know, Mark will show you really the... Um, the real market makers uh, business model because that at the end of the day that's exactly what it is and combining the two for a really 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 powerful way to trade and really it's evergreen right because these things are not going to trade these things are not sorry not going to not going to change um and it, even if they you know did change because you understand how it works you would understand why and you would always be um aware of any typical you know or any changes um to um you know fundamentals or even you know market maker strategies so um the link is in the description box below i highly highly recommend that you uh you uh you um join if you can not sure if it will be recorded, but if it is, then um, probably maybe send it out to those people who you know missed it and maybe requested it. But um, let's see. Don't know if it will be recorded, so definitely see if you can join. Before you do join as well, please watch um, this webinar, uh, which is on YouTube called the Fundamental Analysis Webinar: Three Steps to Generating a Profit profitable forex trade ideas and so um, this will give you a, a really basic understanding of um, how interest rates inflation and GDP works um, in correlation to generate the best trade ideas as I'm not really going to go over this type of stuff if you don't know this and it might be a bit difficult for you to understand um, what I'm talking about with the fundamental strategies on um, on the 4th of November so please watch that uh, before uh, attending so let's get back into um, central bank intervention and the uh, foreign exchange intervention put by the Bank of Japan and I, and I mentioned that it was a rumor because <clears throat> on the 22nd of October well, this this report came out on the 21st of October and it's always talking about the yen soared uh, the most against the dollar since March 2020 as Nikkei reported Japanese authorities intervened again to prop up the currency but when asked um, later on uh, on the next day right um, the, uh, the the Japanese uh, Prime Minister uh, said that when asked whether Japan had taken any action on the currency on Friday Kishida said we won't comment on whether the government has intervened in the market. So it is actually still a rumor. Uh, my best guess is that they, they did, but, and if they have, and uh, then you probably may see some follow through. If they didn't, if they, if they haven't, right, then you could see actually prices start to come up, right? Um, and then, you know, still push them again and test them for another or for them to actually intervene. And uh, really, this this move has been has happened, has happened simply because the dollar really is the dominant currency when you look at it from a fundamental perspective and monetary policy perspective. So let's see what happens. We did get, you know, obviously this move here and then it literally went to the upside. You know, some technical analysis traders might say, oh, well, the same thing happened there, it didn't work there, so why would it work here? But again, you have to understand what's going on behind the scenes uh, in order for you to make that decision. You couldn't just base your, you know, your, your long trading based off of just, uh, you know, because it happened here, it must happen here because, um, you don't know how much uh, more they're intervening, right? And whether that is really the line in the sand um, and they're not willing to tolerate and that whether that is the ceiling, right? But you only know that if you do a bit of reading. Anyways, let's move on. Um, actually, matter of fact, no, I won't move on just yet. Let me just clear the chart. And so um, for me, not against the dollar, I'm not really a buyer of the yen against the dollar, but I will be a buyer. I am a buyer of the yen um, against weaker currencies. If you do want to get long on the dollar, um, 
there's a demand zone. If you're looking for, if you feel that you missed this move and you want to get short, a pullback into the 150s, 151, 152s would be the area to look for some short trades and buy the uh, the yen. Uh, moving on to the uh, sorry dollar uh, Swiss, zooming out a bit. Uh, we've had this spike up above the area, and if you believe that the Swiss franc is uh, a bargain price, then uh, you know any pullbacks to this area here will be decent for a uh, sell. Uh, if you are looking at buying the dollar, then any pullbacks into you know this uh, this wide zone of, of demand is going to be the area to look for buy trades. If you're you know worried about where to buy, then just break the zone down with um, horizontal. Uh, support and resistance areas um, and as well as you know round numbers will be decent as well i think the best areas to look for buy trades if you are looking for a buy trade on the dollar uh dollar swiss is going to be uh the 98 round number 9750s towards the lower end of this uh of this demand zone so uh, i'm not really a pair that i'm interested in in trading at the moment but if you are then um those are the areas that you want to look for uh buy trades Looking at the uh, uh, dollar CAD and the, the, again the Canadian dollar looking to hike by 75 basis points, but so are the um, the, the Federal Reserve. So for me, um, I tend to look for divergences or convergences, right? Fundamental convergences, and there are none um, between the uh, the Canadian dollar, although. Um, the US dollar, I feel, is probably slightly ahead simply because of a more, more of a risk-off environment and money tends to flow into the dollar over a commodity currency. So this hence the reason why you're seeing, uh, you've seen something like this. So a bit of a pullback into that demand zone. If you're looking to buy there, would be um, the, the, the trade. If you're looking to get short on the, um, on the dollar CAD at the moment, I think probably anything up to the highs. I think definitely... Uh, around the uh, 139, 140s is gonna be the better area to look for any kind of short trades. Uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again, zooming out for the year, year to date, you've seen this um, you know, large uh, uh, trend to the downside. And again, that's really because of more, oh, more risk off, um, a more risk off uh, environment and dollar really being a dominant currency. So, um, You've seen a bit of a pullback at the moment up into a decent area of supply. Uh, that could be the area to look for any trades if you feel that the dollar, the US dollar is a, is, is a bargain here, or the next level that would be the, the 60 cent area. Um, if you're looking for buy trades, you know, any pullbacks into this zone around a 55 round number, 55 cent round number will be uh, a decent buy. But I think as a, you know, from a risk, from a risk off perspective, the dollar is the um is the buy continue to be the buy also as well um if there is a dovish sentiment around the us dollar you could see a bit of a, a, a larger pullback um moving on to the dollar um pound dollar and the pound um is going through um a lot of uncertainty at the moment again mentioned before that the um the UK Prime Minister, uh, Liz Truss, uh, pretty much um, had to resign or she resigned and now uh, charting the global uh, economy, the UK recession awaits Liz Truss's successor. So escalating inflation, higher borrowing costs and likely recession are in store for Liz Truss's successor in as Britain's Prime Minister. So UK consumer prices rose 10.1% last month, the first double digit reading in four decades and energy costs are set to soar further this winter. Euro area inflation just managed to slip below the 10 percent mark and the bloc's economy is seen shrinking next year said a con uh, led by contraction in germany so uh, the outlook and this is here are some charts uh, uh, that prepared that appeared on bloomberg this week uh, on the latest developments in the global economy so in the uk quarter on quarter they're forecasted to kind of go into a recession third quarter fourth quarter two negative quarters of growth of gdp growth are considered a recession and so um you know it's um there there are definite you know major issues that the uk inflation accelerates to 40 year highs as well and so um you can see the, com the comparison when it comes to um 
the uh, euro area, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain talks about you know the contraction in the euro, um, and yeah, just problems not only in Europe but more specifically in the, in the UK, and so for me. Um, the pound is still a sell and the UK credit score um, outlook revised to negative by Moody's on political drama. So the outlook for the UK's credit score was revised to negative by Moody's investor service, which, which cited factors including increased unpredictability in policy making. You know, um, uh, the markets like uh, certainty and so with a lot of uncertainty, um, they, you know, will not uh, like that. And so... Um, any movements in price to the upside, um, maybe just some sort of sent sentiment, liquidity hunting, etc. But I think overall, um, any pullbacks will be uh, short trades. I am actually in this trade from here, taking uh, positions off the table. Um, I'm in a small position um, at the moment, and if this pulls back, then you know I just lose that small position. But overall. Uh, I'm going to be up on that trade. Um, that would have been a profitable trade, but any pullbacks, if I get stopped out, I'm definitely going to re-enter uh, to the short side anywhere around, you know, that 115s and above there, I think it's going to be really nice for a another short trade. Hopefully trade it down to the 105s if the uh, UK can't get their act together. Um, if you do want to be a buyer of the pound for whatever reason, then I think probably the areas to look for buy trades are going to be there. Uh, one second, one second, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, they're going to be uh, right here, and let's just change that to demand, and then you've got another uh, demand zone here. So, um, if this was an absolute bargain price for the uh, for the pound, then I think that's probably going to be the best area to look for any kind of buy trades uh, for the pound down at these 104s, 105 levels. Um, but let's see what happens. But I think that the, the, the dollar is the uh, the currency that should want to strengthen over the next coming weeks. Uh, Euro dollar and same thing with the Euro dollar. If you think about who's you know best placed, I think the dollar, the Euro, um, US dollar is definitely best placed. So any price movements to the upside, I think of buying opportunities. Um, the, uh, the, the 75 basis point hike by the Euro um, has pretty much been priced in, I think. And there might be some positive sentiment based off of, you know, future hikes, and as that has to be priced in. But also, again, what the the problem is is that the economy, right, isn't doing well. So hiking into an economy isn't isn't um, doesn't necessarily have the, the most positive effect. And in fact, um, you know, we talk about um, inflation uh, because it's important to watch inflation because the um, central bank. Uh, monetary policy is kind of driven by inflation as well as um, GDP, but uneven inflation spike redraws eurozones east-west divide, and so the eurozone um, and the European Central Bank have a trickier task than other countries simply because they're managing it's a zone, right? So you're managing was it 25, 26 countries in comparison to the UK, which you know the UK government and bank have to only really you know manage. Um, their own, um, you know, one single currency or country, as well as the Fed, you know, have to only manage the, you know, the US, um, you know, in, in the Eurozone, you've got many different countries that have many different governments who have many different views on, um, on policies. And, you know, if inflation is affecting, is affecting one part of the Eurozone, it might not be affecting another. What does the central bank do in terms of, you know, hiking rates? And um, yeah, very, very uneven, which is always a problem, always a problem for the central bank. It's a really massive headache. And so for me, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily buy uh, the Euro. Also as well, here's some analysis. A strong Euro is a welcome but unlikely development. Uh, again, a strong Euro because of inflation. Um, to kind of uh, cap inflation and this is why it is true that the ECB has consistently surprised on the hawkish side in the past few meetings the positive impact on the euro has been null so as shown in the table below the euro dollar most weakened uh, in the six hours following the last five ECB announcements so you know for those people who like statistics um, you know there there is there is your uh, uh, this, this is basically you know what has happened and um, and so, yeah, I know the reasons why that's happened. And again, just for repeat, it's because the, the euro is seen as the as the worst, one of the worst currencies, especially against the dollar as well. So, you know, I expect the same thing to happen 
any pullbacks will be, for me anyway, shorting opportunities, again, not financial advice. Uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar, again, Aussie dollar, um, I think this move is just really just a pullback. And I think the dollar, US dollar should be a, a buy around here in a risk off environment. The RBA have, you know, turned quite hawkish, I'm sorry, dovish as they didn't. They were expected to hike by 0 0.75 basis points, but they didn't, they hiked by zero, oh, sorry. They were expected to hike by 0.5% or 50 basis points, but in fact, they didn't. They hiked by 0.25%, which is basically 25 basis points. And so uh, that was known as a dovish hike. And you're seeing, you know, pretty much this happen. Any pullbacks, I think, will be shorting opportunities. Any reversals, any pullbacks will be, you know, down into that one uh, 0.62 area if you want to be a buyer. And if that area doesn't work, then you've got a couple of uh, supply zones just above um, here, and then you've got one here and here as well for you to look for uh, any kind of short trades if you want to get involved in that currency pair, uh, Aussie Yen. And so uh, the Aussie Yen, um, yeah, uh, the, 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 again, the rumors of the uh, of, um, of intervention, um, you know, obviously, you know, caused the market to, you know, go from 95s all the way down to the 93s, and then it's kind of pulled back again. So again, I think a continuation of this uh, is probably going to be confirmation of the Bank of Japan uh, that they did actually intervene, and you can see, you know, that that would probably be what happened. There's, you know, a doji candle, which is known as an indecision candle. So there's, you know, the the market has been, you know, undecided. Also as well, Friday liquidity, everyone's taking their positions off the table, maybe to re-enter, you know, to go short. Um, so let's see what happens there. If you are looking to go short on this currency pay, any pullbacks, I think, uh, to the 95, 50s, 96 areas would be decent for a short trade, for a long trade. Any pullbacks down into this zone here, I think is okay, but just understand that and recognize that this level has been touched several times. So, um, you know, the best area to always look for a long trade is, is the fresh area of demand should be around here. That was a fresh area of demand there. And so you can see what's happened, but I don't know whether I want to be a buyer against the, uh, the, the central bank really and go against the central bank if they are um, intervening. And gold, and so gold came down into a nice uh, demand zone um, around the uh, 16, uh, 15 area. Really nice, uh, you know, demand zone, fresh area of demand. Prices pulled back now. Again, just understanding that um, at the moment, what's been happening is is that the you know the market is more focused on the return on the dollar on the yield, and as the Federal Reserve has been hiking rates, uh, the market has been more concerned um, and put their money into maybe getting a yield on the dollar rather than um, uh, 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 putting it into a non-yielding asset like uh, like gold, right? And gold historically has been a hedge against inflation. Uh, but for some reason, uh, this year it really uh, hasn't acted, or for for at least a, a good maybe six months of the year, it hasn't really acted as um, an inflation hedge. But I still think gold is a buy um, over the medium to long term. And so, if you do think that as well, I think this is a, this is a great opportunity to look for you know buy trades uh, to the upside, and especially as the Fed potentially start to look to pivot from. Um, from hiking rates as well. So they're looking to go for maybe 75 basis points to potentially, you know, 25 and then start to hold. I think gold is then going to come up and especially if inflation, you know, they don't get inflation to come down as much or only inflation to come down to maybe, you know, the seven, six, five percent. So I think that gold should be a potential buy. Um, but if you are looking to continue to short gold, then um, you know any anywhere up into those six, 16, 70 area, and especially the uh, seventeen thirty area. This was obviously the best area to look for short trades, fresh area of supply. Uh, but you can get um, uh, you know prices can bounce around here as well. But for me, um, I'm more of a longer term uh, buyer of gold, and so um, yeah, let's see what happens from here anyways guys that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed the analysis and um i'll see you next week and uh, take care and hope you have a great trading week